How NoFap is hurting you. My friends, we're diving in today on desire, on instinct, and the psychology behind repression versus transmutation. This is really an important message for the modern day. In the modern day, we have no internal awareness and intelligence when it comes to alchemizing instincts or desires and elevating elevating and harmonizing our energy towards a goal. Right now, what we do is we create all this internal conflict. An emotion comes up. Oh, there's a beautiful woman. Maybe I'm, you know, lustful. Oh, but masturbating is bad. Lust is bad. So we step on it. We condemn it. We condemn that part of ourselves, that, that energy, instead of learn to transmute it. It's the same when it comes to addiction. It's the same when it comes to relationships and so much other, you know, emotional you know, more primal parts of ourselves, we really are at odds with, we're really separated from. So this video is a really important message, my friends. Please share this message with someone you think will impact. This is Reality Files. I'm Christian. Let's dive in. No fat. Honestly, I practice no fat, okay? But I also practice transmutation of my sexual energy. Here's the thing when it comes to sexual energy, my friends. When it's not used, you kind of lose it. It's like a muscle, okay? And sexual energy or creative life force is literally the most like vital living energy in the body, okay? By shaming ourselves to lust or cutting ourselves off and just repressing that instinct because we think that that's a means to an end. We think, oh, I'm going to be, you know, chaste or I'm going to practice chastity because that means I'm going to have more energy or I'm doing no fat to be healthier. These kinds of things. It's like, shit, we are creating repression there. What we're doing is we're like stuffing that emotion down, stuffing down those feelings, locking ourselves off from our creative potential, really. Right. Instead of transmuting that instinct into a higher instinct. You know, that repression, what it's doing is actually creating sourness in the soul where you're at war with yourself, right? We see this with addiction, where if we're addicted to something, oftentimes other people and ourselves will shame ourselves for doing it instead of learn to compassionately understand the situation and alchemize the instinct. Okay. So when it comes to no fat, my friends, really ask yourself, am I doing this because Like I have a noble, let me give you a story. Let me give you an example of this. Okay. Alexander the Great. He was not interested in women. You know, a lot of warriors back in the day practiced no fab or sexual transmutation to have greater vigor, to have greater vitality, to have more juice per se. Right. So Alexander the Great you know, was very uninterested in women for most of his life until he was about, I I forget, maybe 25 or 27 towards the end of his campaign, right? Always said no to women because why? Not because he was practicing no fat, but because he was literally convicted of a dream, a dream for his nation, a, a aspiration for glory, for excellence, for personal self command and mastery, right? He was convicted of this dream and that drove his every action, okay? That will to greatness that is usually birthed within most and every man. That will to be excellent in whatever you do, right? That's a deep, noble instinct. That's a deep feeling, a deeper value that you can live into. I experienced this in high school. I basically completely around, like, cut myself off from woman because I had these higher, like, aspirations and I saw them as like distracting in that time you know and essentially let's say you have like creative ambitions you're a great painter a great musician what you do is like when you when it's time to go after those deeper instincts those deeper dreams you you put yourself away somewhere where you can really focus where you can really go deep woman masturbation lust these things don't even come up because your energy is being used is being transmuted into a higher instinct here's the thing my friends instincts deep desires can never be repressed only replaced okay anything repressed will arise if you repress your anger if you repress you know your frustration your sadness if you repress repress your lust 
right? These things will rise back up. What we must do is learn to replace the instinct with something deeper, with something more noble, to intelligently direct how we feel and what we believe, right? So when it comes to NoFap, A, sexual energy must learn to be used, whether that's in creativity, whether that's in your will to greatness, whether that's in your aspirations, or whether that's in sexual tantra, right? And essentially, by practicing that with that sexual energy and really embodying it, really using it, really transmuting it and bringing it up, right? You can aspire to love. Let's, let's have this example, okay? Lust to love. This is a transmutation from a base energy to a noble energy. How do you do this, right? When you're with a woman, right? You can see a woman as like this objectified sexual thing, right? And you can like get really into it. When I make love with my woman, you know, it's about literally like loving her with all of me, loving all of her. It is about this intimate dance of the heart. And that's what I aspire to. That's the vision. It's not like a base energy. It's a higher energy. And by breathing into that, by really loving, by being in the presence of love, right? And invoking that deeper, deeper, more noble, maybe that emotion of the soul per se. By aspiring towards that, you are transmuting and uplifting that base energy. It's like, where is your vision set? Here's the thing, my friends, getting even to like another chapter, another phase here, is looking at your life like, Where's your great aspiration? What's like the unifying idea in your life? Okay, I'm working with someone who's a great like builder and architect, you know, and he wants to make eco sustainable village type things. And that's like a chief aspiration for him. Another person wants to be the greatest musician, bringing conscious, you know, transformational vibes all over the world, right? It's like, what's your chief aspiration? And if you don't know it, my friends, I encourage you to dig deep. You know, I encourage you to like really consider your dharma, your inner truth, your skills, your uniqueness. And what do you aspire to? What's what's the highest hope, the secret hope inside your heart? If we don't know this, my friends, and we're resigned to life, if we don't have something higher pulling us forward, right? Maybe it's your relationship to God. Maybe it's your business. Maybe it's your mission and service into the world. Maybe it's your art masterpiece. Maybe it's your great work. Whatever it is, if we don't have that more lofty arrow that we're aiming and we're resigning to life, the powers of the base energies will be all we have left to work with, per se. All of a sudden, like, it's really hard not to consume anything. All of a sudden, like, you know, lust and these types of things keep coming up. The only happiness we get is from consuming, whether it's consuming media or people or a nice dinner or fancy foods and or like a you know, watching a sport, it's like all consumption, that's happiness to you, you know, and then you try to war with yourself, like, if you're in this, and all you value is like consumption, and this kind of pleasure thing, right, but then you're at war with yourself to like, oh, but, you know, jerking off is bad, I should stop, you know, spilling my seed, or something like that, then you just repress that piece of yourself, instead of choose a loftier aim to use that energy with, Choose a loftier instinct. Instinct can never be repressed, only replaced. Okay? This ties into a couple other points I want to hit on, my friend. For addiction, per se. Let's look at that. Healing begins at understanding the wound. Healing begins at understanding the wound. When it comes to addiction, let's say it's to food. Okay? Maybe you have a feeling of hollowness, of emptiness about life, okay? So then we eat food. Or maybe it's, you know, to, to weed and we feel like, you know, we want to escape or we want to have these higher thoughts, okay? If we gave ourselves, you know, and really found something that strikes the, tr the true chords of our heart, that's a little bit higher, but it's that same energy of wanting to feel maybe freedom or pleasure, you know, we need to find that thing and direct our energy there. We must learn how to create that state, create that feeling of maybe getting high or like, you know, eating a satisfying meal. We need to learn how to create that feeling elsewhere. Maybe it's in a deep breathwork meditation with the sun. You know, maybe it's in 
you know, drawing or doodling or painting or something. You must learn how to create the energy or the state of feeling that you're addicted to. You must learn how to create that with a more noble or lofty aspiration, but create the same feeling that will free yourself from dependence on something else. Okay. An example, not long ago, you know, I stopped smoking in the morning, but I didn't try to stop smoking. Okay. What I did was I realized that I love God more. And I aspire to be with God. That's the instinct I want to follow in the morning. And I acted in service of that value. Instead of trying to stop smoking weed, find a new connection that's stronger. Find an instinct that's stronger to go hiking, to go do something fun. My friends, I'm about to run out of time on this video. Thanks for watching. If you guys enjoyed, please share this message. And if you guys want to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, you can apply for a free conversation. Link in the description for that. Hit that like button, share this message.